How do you transform a cavernous cold church into a futuristic house? Or turn dilapidated old barns into stylish family homes? From industrial workshops to ancient windmills, this series follows brave homeowners. Initially when we took it on, it was just falling apart. As they take on the seemingly impossible challenges that is going to happen until next year, never mind three weeks' time. It's absolutely barreling down. Of transforming historic structures never built to be lived in. We explore the master crafts and ingenious modern design it takes to build an impossible house. This will never be a history saved. In this episode, a creative couple. But I think. Maybe a hat instead, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Battle crumbling brickwork. The original wall has come away from the chapel. On a shoestring budget. The carcass was 150 quid. We bought the sink for 50 quid. Magpie here. Recruiting friends and neighbours. Pairs, these are absolutely They're amazing. beautiful. We're going to owe lots of people lots of time doing things after we've finished. To help them transform this historic chapel... Oh, my God! ...into their dream home. Hey! Gosh, it's much more beautiful than I realised. In the mid-Devon countryside, Right, here we go. Alice and Daniel Shamroth enjoy spending their weekends exploring junk stores and car boot sales, hunting for vintage gems to upcycle. This resourceful couple met in 2008 and married six years later. Alice is a professional photographer. You get somewhere like this and you think, oh, I might find something amazing today. While Daniel, also known as Shammy, makes a living as a musician. She don't wanna go play in the water. Together, they're skilled in the art of spotting a bargain. Yeah. That Those are great. <gasps> so we've got that and that. So just, just those, just those two. two. Uh, 250 for both. Lovely, yep. Now they're hoping to put their creative talents to good use on their biggest find yet. After living together for nearly 10 years, they're leaping onto the property ladder for the very first time. Their first house will be their greatest upcycle project yet. They plan to transform this mid 19th century chapel into their perfect pad. This is where we enter the kind of heart of the chapel. Got a nice height here, um, nice and light. The chapel's last service was held in the summer of 2015. Alice and Shami bought the building two years later. A home to us is, is being able to have an inspiring space that we wake up every morning and feel that we want to be creative in, that we want to have a family in. As soon as we walked through the door, we both completely fell in love with it. The stone-built chapel is tucked away in the Devonshire village of Zeal Monocorum. The structure was built in 1855. Away from the main road, its nickname is the Hidden Chapel. Until this building was built, the congregationalists were meeting in the living room of somebody's house and they actually got that consecrated um, in order to have it as a church and then they managed to raise the money to build to build this building. In 1939, the building was modernised, gaining running water and a flush toilet. A new extension for its Sunday school was built in 1952, but nothing has been done since. It's all down to Alice, really. She loves finding old things and turning them into something reimagined or something new. Um, and this is, yeah, the ultimate version of going to the tip and finding something lovely. After years of neglect, this chapel is going to need all of their creative problem solving to turn it into a home. Mm. 
So as you come out of the chapel, down the steps, you're into what would have been the old kitchen kind of scullery area. This would have been the old Sunday school. This kind of slightly scary looking bit of wall here actually is just where the two buildings have come apart slightly. This chapel came with some added extras, but where some people see trash, Alice sees treasure. Here's all the lovely old cups that the congregation would have had their tea out of and teapots. We're going to keep it all and use it. We love it. And all of these were left. These were all the old hymn books and things, um, which I love. I just love the typography and the, the covers. So we're going to frame some of these. To save money, Alice and Shami took a risk and bought the chapel for just £40,000 without permission for conversion. But with an uncle who is a surveyor and a cousin in planning, they managed to argue their case successfully and get their scheme approved. Alice and Shami's idea is to maintain the chapel's open plan design and utilise it as one large living space. The ground floor will become a kitchen diner and lounge area. They'll create a mezzanine level with a spiral staircase at the entrance of the chapel to be their main bedroom. The old toilet area will be turned into a bathroom and spare bedroom. And they'll remodel the Sunday school to become a studio with a small south-facing terrace to make up for the current lack of outdoor space. It's quite a large room, really, in terms of the footprint of the building. It's all south-facing, so we've got some sunshine, we can have barbecues out here and so on. I can come and work in here and edit in here, the light will be great. Hang a few guitars on the wall. Hang a few guitars, only a few. <laughs> <laughs> a few guitars on the wall. And then, yeah, further down the line, kind of children's playroom, but also have a sofa bed in here so that friends can come and stay. So, yeah, multifunctional. Alice and Shami are confident they can do all this on a budget of only £60,000. They need to save money wherever they can. They won't be able to live in the chapel during the build, so they're staying rent-free 30 miles down the road with Alice's mum, Tess. There's normally a glass of wine in hand, though. And mother-in-law sometimes lets you have a gin and tonic. <laughs> We're living with mum at the moment, um, and we have been for quite a while. Mum's been amazing, not charging us any rent, so we can save loads of money. Although a money-saving move, there are other reasons the family have pulled together at this time. Alice's father, Ian, sadly passed away shortly after they purchased the chapel. We are all sort of looking after each other um, after Dad passed away. The way the circumstances have kind of transpired and everything's kind of fallen, we've, we've been able to be here and that's been, that's been amazing. Ian was a huge influence on them taking on the project. Dad absolutely loved the chapel. He was, you know, really excited about our ideas and, and loved the building. He was really into sort of um, Georgian buildings and symmetry and proportion. And so it, it appealed to all of his senses of design and everything. And we were able to tell him just before he died that we had got the planning through, which was amazing. I think that the build process has actually been a really cathartic one for Mum. It's a diversion, it's, it's something else that's going on and it's, it's not focusing on, on the grief, but at the same time we're all hugely aware that Dad would be so proud of what we've done. 18 months after buying their chapel, Alice and Shami have the green light and work on the build finally begins. It's been a long, long wait and now it's actually happening. Um, now we've got the guys here, we've cleared the pews, we can really see the space once the pews are cleared um, and the steels are going in. It's all kicking off, which is great. The team's first task is to install a steel frame. This will not only support the mezzanine bedroom, but also bolster the strength of the entire building. Wow, wow, wow. Colin Weeks is the project's lead builder. <laughs> get these steels upright, it was never going to marry up with the walls because the walls are so out of square. So what we've, the challenge was to get them in, chase out behind the steels to get it dead level so that the middle piece can get bolted together and everything then is, is parallel, level and straight. Colin and his team must install four steel beams to support the new mezzanine floor. But because the walls are uneven, the beams might not fit. 
also an old tie bar that holds up the 164-year-old walls is in their way. Colin must weld the ends of the old bar to the new steel supports, then cut the bar and hope their new steels can take the weight of the massive stone walls. Transforming this old relic into a home is not going to be easy. They're always a challenge, not like a new build. When you build it from scratch, you're building it upright, you're building it square. This is just a completely different challenge altogether. The steel beams must sit perfectly level, or the mezzanine floor will sit at an angle. Yeah, that's spot on. More than happy with that, yeah. With the beam level, they must make sure that it supports the wall before they remove the old tie bar. Once we release that tie bar and cut it, there's a good chance that the walls could spread. So we need to weld the tie bar onto our new steels so that the walls can't spread or go anywhere. It's time to find out if the new steel beams are doing their job supporting the building. They're about to snip off the tie bar and, fingers crossed, when they snip it, the whole walls don't fall down. Well done. <laughs> Look at that. We should use that for something. With the chapel still standing, the interior begins to take shape. After four months of work through the winter, the mezzanine floor and spiral staircase are in. The old kitchen and scullery area have been boarded out and are starting to take shape. So this back section here has really come on, um, it's really exciting. We've got this area here that's going to be the utility room. And then through here... Into the bathroom. Big bath in here, Lou. What was really exciting is getting this height. So this is going to be our spare room. Um, and I'm standing where the bed the, will be the here. The outside loo used to be. Yes, yeah, so, this, so this, that this used to be the outside skanky loo. old outside loo. Space. And once we've yeah, got that window exactly. there, it's going to bring a lot of light in. Yeah, it'd be lovely. The team's next challenge is to brave the cold, to transform the old Sunday school into a studio and terrace. They want to retain as much of the old brickwork as possible, but this old wall is falling apart. The original wall has come away from the chapel. When we've looked closer, you can see it's kind of shifted. You can see a gap down here on the floor where the whole thing's come away from the original fittings. So we're going to have to take this down and rebuild it. Stabilising the wall will take extra time and money. Attempting to transform this historic structure on a limited budget is ambitious. The problems are starting to snowball. It is the way it goes, it's the nature of old buildings, but it is a few hundred quid here, a few hundred quid there, things we weren't expecting. Some days you see massive progress and you get excited and some days you're just dealing with problems. But a problem shared is a problem halved and today they're rallying the troops. The challenge? To paint the chapel's huge 160 square metres of interior wall space. We've got to madly try and get everything painted before the kitchen comes in. So we thought we'd invite loads of friends and family and get them to all help. So yeah, lots of swaps and favours and we're going to owe lots of people lots of time doing things after we've finished. Just to see the whole space starting to turn white, it's just really opened it up, hasn't it? The paintwork needs to be finished before they can install the bespoke kitchen which is being made by upcycling the chapel's pews. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required.
The kitchen is being built in Devon, on England's south coast, in the workshop of skilled carpenter Kes McGee. He's a good friend of Alison Shammy's and has taken on the challenge of transforming the old chapel pews into handmade kitchen cabinets and worktops to retain the chapel's heritage. I can definitely see their sort of dream and their creative side. It's awesome what they're doing. To cut costs, Alice has bought a set of second-hand cupboard carcasses for just £150 to use as the skeleton of the kitchen units. This is the plan for the kitchen. I use CAD for this, actually. <laughs> I bought a couple of sanding discs and, that, and that's it, you know, £3.50 or something. Just, just my time. Each pew is made of three main pieces. Kez will remodel the aisle pieces into doors for the cupboards and drawer units. He'll attach the hardwood seats together to create new worktops. The back of the pews will fix onto the exposed areas of the second-hand kitchen carcasses. This is the end of the pew. So that, that would have sit, sat like there. You wouldn't really want that in your kitchen, would you? But you just wait for the miracles. This isn't a job for the faint-hearted. So this is all sort of starting to rot and it's got signs of worm. You can see the worm has just like totally destroyed that. These century-old pews are a dream meal for woodworm, but it isn't putting off master craftsman Kez. This is all pitch pine, which you can't get hold of pitch pine anymore. It's such a good timber. Like, if you look at the grain on this, so you've got the, the winter growth here, which is that tight, sort of darker grain, which is full of the resin. Then you've got the spring and summer growth. It's like a history book, really, be a tree like that. First, Kes must cut the old pew end down to size, so it fits over the second-hand units. <laughs> That's it, Sim simple as, it comes apart. Those get slotted out. That can all be cleaned up now. All the rock's gone, totally perfect. Alice wants dark wood cabinets, so Kez is using an innovative approach to achieve the right look. It's called yakisugi. Good for a winter's day. <laughs> <sighs> yakisugi, meaning burnt cedar, is an ancient Japanese timber preservation technique. There we go. You can see all the resin look here bubbling out. This is why this timber is so durable. Yakisugi was fashionable throughout 17th century Japan, but its origins date back even further. The Haruji Buddhist temple near Nara in Japan is home to the earliest existing example of the technique. It can be seen in the temple's five-story, 100-foot pagoda, which dates back to 711 and is the world's oldest wooden structure. It doesn't matter how much you blowtorch it, the more you blowtorch it, the more this burns away. And the deeper you go, the, the more character you're going to get out of the timber. Kez sands the charred pitch pine back to give the old pews a new lease of life. So that is a cupboard. That is a, that is a door cupboard. We fit these ones back in. This plane's probably be about as old as the, um, the pew. <laughs> and these ones just slide straight back in there. Ta da! One cupboard door. All it needs is two hinges and a handle. That's it. And that, you got covered. Better than it used to look. <laughs> One cupboard down, ten to go. These are some drawers which I've turned from the pew seats. I've worked on kitchens which people have paid like 70 grand for a kitchen. And it's like, are you serious? You know, this has cost nothing. And it just shows that this kitchen will be totally unique. No one else will have a kitchen like this and it's, it's free.
apart from a bit of labour. Someone who believes in sustainability and upcycling as much as Alice is Cressy Wesling. She and partner Elvis run a business that transforms discarded industrial waste like old fire hoses into luxury items such as belts, purses and bags. In 2013, they found the dream historic building tucked away in the Kent countryside to use as a base for both their business and home. This building was built in 1837 and it was designed to be a flour mill. So the grain would come in, they'd grind it into flour and at the far end of the building over there they actually had a bakery. Cressy and Elvis bought this old flour mill for £355,000, transforming the vast 6,000 square foot industrial structure into four live workspaces was a Herculean task. It was divided up into lots of little rabbit warrens, lots of little spaces. It was very, very gross and covered in muck in a lot of locations. It took them two years, and Cressy was keen to maintain as much of the building's historic character as possible. We've got all of the original flooring, all of the windows are original, because we didn't really want to produce any waste when we were fixing the building. As with Alice and Shammy's chapel, the kitchen is very much the heart of this home. I love these lights that are above the peninsula, uh, which are old fire buckets. These kitchen cabinets were all in the mill, so we just sanded it back and sprayed them all black to keep the kind of look quite neutral in here. Then all of the wood accents that are around here, like the wood that's on the edge and the wood that makes the shelving, is all reclaimed scaffolding board. The countertop is made entirely of tiny little bits of scrap, marble and granite. It was relentless, but it was also always exciting. I think, you know, it's, it's tough to say and maybe Elvis would disagree, but I think we kind of wish we had another project now. <laughs> this is a stunning example of how to create a distinctive home with sustainable materials, hard work and determination. In Devon, Alice and Shami are celebrating a major milestone in the transformation of their chapel. Really exciting <coughs> day today. We've got our kitchen arriving. Yeah, good day. After four weeks' work, Kez is bringing the old pews back home. We're so excited. It's our kitchen in a trailer. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Oh, mate, nice one. Thank you so much for bringing it down. Can't wait to see it all together. That's a countertop! Yeah, they need standing down. Oh but my god! They're amazing, aren't they? <gasps> awesome. God! That's, the, that's corner. the corner one. These are the shelves from the back of the pews, and we save them to use them as kick plates. And they've got all this lovely old graffiti. Yeah, the pews are back. This one off kitchen is finally coming to life and Alice's clever approach to reuse and recycle is helping them keep costs down. The carcass was 150 quid. We bought the sink for 50 quid and then Kez's labour, which is about £1,000. Compared to going to wherever and getting one made, um, it's much cheaper and much more interesting. Magpie here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exciting having our own sink. Yeah. Two and a half years down the line, we finally can see our first ever proper kitchen in, in our first ever house that we've owned. So, yeah, yeah, it's exciting times. Alice is particularly excited about the new fixtures she's bought to add a touch of glitz to the chapel's new look. These are the most beautiful lampshades anyone's ever seen in their life. And they were only five pounds. <clears throat> There's a slight discussion about <laughs> where they're going to appear. <laughs> Sammy's not completely sure about them, but I think... Maybe a hat instead, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. It's all systems go as the kitchen takes shape. Have you got three of these? Got three of right these, there. yeah. Okay. 
Uh, or three of something, <laughs> three of if something. we're not sure about them. <laughs> the creative sparks are flying. And then the fairy likes to going along mm. that pole, okay. aren't they? Yep, that's fine. You yeah. always put a controller on it so they can twinkle. Ah. <laughs> it's all getting very gold and twinkly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what's worries. going on. <laughs> Designing your own home is a challenge. Making the best use of space can be difficult, but it also gives you the chance to innovate and create something unique and very personal. These are some amazing radiators that came from Plymouth Naval College originally. They were originally £550 for three, um, and we went to see them and fell in love with them, but we said we can't pay that, I'm really sorry. But I haggled slowly over time. I wore her down. £300, £100 each. So that's really, really good, because ones half this size go for about that normally. The interior of the chapel will remain an open plan space, with the addition of a mezzanine level bedroom, which will be accessed by a spiral staircase. Moving furniture into the bedroom would mean trying to fit it up the narrow stairway, which wouldn't work. So Alice has come up with a clever solution. She's found two semicircular vintage window frames online for £60. They're welding these together to create a circle and fitting it into a frame. The window will be hinged, enabling it to swing open so they can hoist furniture up into the mezzanine space. Needs to get. The task of installing the feature window rests on the shoulders of good friends Mark and Alan. Now it's, it's getting to that point where we're using our friends with bespoke skills. Using but, our friends. Using our we've friends. run out of money, yeah. so we've got to use yeah. them. We're, we're exploiting our friends. To try and keep the build on budget, Alice and Shami are striking deals to pay their friends in creative ways. We've done lots of swaps for wedding photography um, mm. with people and web, making websites and all of those sort of trades and barters kind of coming into play now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to still have a lot of things to do when we've finished and go and help you all with their projects. But it's really nice, yeah, kind of having people around us that we yeah. know and love. Mark and Alain need to anchor the wooden window frame firmly into the wall. It'll weigh around 70 kilos once the glass is installed. There's a lot of weight on this window and the window's going to swing right out across the room, so we want to make sure you know, the whole thing is well supported, basically. Mark and Alain have devised an ingenious solution to make sure that Alice's idea doesn't come crashing down. We went for gate hinges because, obviously, we know that they can carry the load. Got a steel brace. We're going to fix that through bolt it. Then we know for sure that no accidents <laughs> While the boys get on with the window installation, Alice and Shami inspect progress on the transformation of the old Sunday school into a studio. The bifolds went in a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Um, really exciting. But it suddenly made this room look bigger. There was this kind of false ceiling in there, which was very low and oppressive. And as soon as we got rid of that and revealed the height, we started to visualise what we could do with this space. We're really happy um, with the extension. It's turned into kind of a, a, a zone two of the chapel, yeah. hasn't it? And it's nice to have that contrast and the light flooding <laughs> through. Yeah. I mean, it's boiling in there today. Alice and Shami have come up with yet more ingenious ways to maximise the potential of their sunny terrace. One of the things we've spoken about is bringing the patio up to the same level as the, the floor inside, which would be one giant indoor space. outdoor room. Yeah. Yeah. These pews? These pews, we're going to have around the edge, aren't we, for seating? Outdoor wood burner in the corner, yeah, of course. Barbecue? A barbecue there. Yeah. We want to obviously utilise this amazing view mm. and keep as much of that as possible, but still have a bit of privacy. It's lovely. Yeah. We'll just enjoy that every day. This chapel has been blessed with views across Zeal since it was built in 1855, but the village's history goes back a lot further. It's thought that King Canute gifted Zeal to Buckfast Abbey, a Benedictine monastery in 1018. 
The village's full name, Zeal Monocorum, is Latin for Cell of the Monks. Zeal remained the property of the abbey until the dissolution of the monasteries in 1539, but its ecclesiastical past is remembered today on the village sign. Alison Shami's chapel sits nestled in the heart of this historic Devonshire village. Used as a place of worship for over 150 years, transforming it into a home is creating many unique challenges. The problem of getting up to the mezzanine was solved by one of Alice's greatest finds. This spiral staircase cost only £500 and fitted the space exactly. This actually came from Oxford University. We just built it and it just fitted. The handmade circular window is another individual feature of the build, and today it's ready to be tested. It's a one-off piece, isn't it? So, you know, it's not like it's in everyone's front room. <laughs> right, you both ready? Ready. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> As Tim the electrician was doing some final wiring, he uncovered an interesting feature in the front porch. The electrician had to take the wire through the panelling of the old porch. And yeah. he said, do you mind if I take off a little bit of the panelling so that I can get the wire through easily? So we were like, yeah, no problem. Just try and take it off in one piece. We can put it back on again. And when he did that, we revealed this really nice stone behind it. So we thought, well, we might as well reveal it completely. That's the kind of beauty of this kind of project, isn't it? You kind of uncover things that you didn't know were going to be there. Um, and then it sort of changes the direction you're going to take the building a little bit. Um, you know, obviously the front door is such a fundamental point of a building. Uh, it's the first thing you see, you know, when you're coming through the doors. So we want it to look in keeping with the period. Eager to see what lies behind the rest of the panelling, they waste no time tearing it down. Whoa, look at that. Oh, my God. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. And in just 10 minutes, they've uncovered the original stonework. It looks amazing. Um, and now we've got lots of new ideas about what we want to do with it. Yeah. We're now thinking, having revealed the beautiful stone archway, we can do better, can't we? Can we? Better. Even with a tiny budget. Yeah, have wooden carved posts or something. Inspired by the unlocked potential of the chapel's entrance, Alice and Shami are visiting Alice's favourite reclamation treasure trove. After a bit of talking, we have decided to knock that whole atrocious monstrosity down. This is potentially what it would look like without the porch there. The dream would be to try and find some posts that we could make a kind of portico to go over the top, and then we'd have a flat top. And then in time, Maybe we can enclose it. Right, so should we go and find the columns of dreams? Let's do it. Let's go. We found it. If we cut that in half <laughs> and stuck it on the front of the chapel, <laughs> oh my god, it would look amazing. These are great. Uh -huh. Do you reckon? A seven foot cast pillar, three, two, five, including that. Each. Maybe we can afford one. Cool. And then these things are lovely. A couple of those either side of the front door with a bay tree in. Mm -hmm. Having found planters for bay trees, yard owner Oliver is keen to show them some traditional porch columns. Fresh in. Missed those. We've totally missed those. Yeah, I mean, they're not cheap, to be honest, but they're oh, okay. absolutely awesome. So, what are we looking at for those? 600 for the pair. 600 for the pair. Yeah. Should we give them a measure? Shape. How much would you be able to do that? I will take 500. Even with a generous discount, the columns would take a hefty chunk out of their tight budget. So for now, attention turns back to the planters. 
What would you do on a couple of those? The absolute best I can do is 24 quid pieces. OK. We could de definitely take two of those today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll have to have a chat about the, the pillars, cos I'm mm. slightly in love with those. Yes. That one's similar. That one. Some more over there. All oh, those ones. Perfect. So we have a match. You might want to paint the planters will be a welcome addition to the new entrance, but they're going to have to count their pennies to see if their budget will stretch to the columns of dreams. Yeah, perfect. It's been over two and a half years since Alice and Shammy bought their 19th century chapel in the mid-Devon village of Zeal Monocorum, and 15 months since they started work on it. At the end of the chapel, the old Sunday school has been transformed into a sunny extension. With the old porch demolished and the longed-for columns on the back burner for now, the simple addition of the two planters has made the once uninviting entrance look smart and welcoming. Inside, Alice and Shammy have completely reconfigured what was a large, cold, empty space into zoned and practical living areas that really show off this couple's creative talents. What we loved when we plan, first wasn't? opened yeah. the doors was the sense of space and the height and the light. Yeah. All thanks to those large chapel windows that let the sun flood in from all angles. But it's this couple's attention to detail that's turned this once derelict chapel into a home. Alice's bargain radiators and a wood burner make a real statement and transform this once cold space into somewhere warm and cosy. The heat rises up, so it gets hot up there. The bedroom gets nice and cosy, but then it sort of filters down. In every corner, there's evidence of Alice and Shammy's thrifty approach to living. The chapel's packed with the treasures they've curated over nearly 10 years of living together. When your back's against the wall and you haven't got much a, a, a huge budget, it does force you to be creative. Yeah, we've used everything that we possibly can, mm. and things that we haven't managed to use yet, we've got in storage to turn into shelves in the future, or you know, Shuttles. wardrobes when yeah. we've got more money. Upstairs on the mezzanine level is the elegant master bedroom. Beyond that, there's a simple yet chic ensuite. They've cleverly incorporated the top of a chapel window into the room, giving it the brightness and warmth they love. It's our little yeah. nest, and it's almost yeah. like a little treehouse. Perhaps the most ingenious and beautiful feature of this space is that huge circular window, one of the many things achieved with the help of one of Alice and Shammy's friends. Our rubbish collection man Jordan Stroke Welder He's designer. been amazing, yeah. We yeah, literally found him he turned up one day to pick up some rubbish and we thought, we like you, you can stay. Yeah. So we've got him to do loads of stuff. So he welded this and he helped us put in all the copper and some of this metal came off his shed. If you sit at the end of the bed, the God is Love sign is framed perfectly in the window. Upstairs certainly makes the most of the limited space. Downstairs, it's the kitchen that showcases Alice and Shammy's upcycling at its finest. The old cupboard carcasses have been completely transformed into a unique, bespoke kitchen. The Japanese yakisugi finish on the chapel's old pews doesn't just look good, it also makes the wood fire retardant and waterproof ideal for use in a kitchen. And Alice got her lights. There's plenty more to see in the rear extension. A traditional and stylish bathroom features a roll-top bath and reclaimed brass fittings. Stairs lead down to the new, bright studio, opening to an enclosed terrace 
with a stunning view. This was the original Sunday school room. We've kept the height. Now we've got a really usable studio space. Removing the end of the old Sunday school and repurposing it as a terrace beautifully connects the inside to the outside with the help of large bifolding doors. We can just pull these right back and just enjoy the space. It's a real sun trap. There's no doubt that Alice and Shami have risen to the challenge of breathing new life into what was a run-down shell. It's taken more than a year of hard work and has been stressful at times, but they now have a home to be very proud of. There was a point in the middle where we thought, yeah. oh, what have we done? But now, definitely, definitely, totally 100% worth it. Totally worth worth it. it. We love it. Shami and Alice hope to complete the build on a total budget of just £100,000. We definitely have gone over that. Um, but we think in total, including buying it, about 130. Plumbing bits cost us more than, that we, did cost a, a um, fair than we expected. The back extension, um, we weren't going to have floor to ceiling glass, but we decided as soon as we saw that view that you know, it'd be it silly not it. to, yeah. so we spent a bit more on that. There's no way we could have got anywhere near a home as beautiful as this mm. for as little as it's cost. Yeah. Um, if we'd done the traditional way of buying. It's a bit wet and horrible. To mark the end of the project, <laughs> Alice and Shami have gathered their friends and family to celebrate a joint effort. Well done. Anybody for a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? Alice's mum, Tess, has been with them every step of the way. My husband would be so proud of them, and it's a special building. It's just got the most lovely atmosphere. It's a real family effort, really, I feel, and it's, it's worked. It was Jordan who created the bedroom's striking circular window. Originally, I was commissioned to take the rubbish away, and then I ended up welding windows, doing patios, making copper handrail, towel rail things. I've done all sorts. Neighbour Graham has also played a key part in the build. Plastered the ceiling, made the doors, hung the doors. We're a village, we help each other. I'm hoping they'll join the Skittles team. <laughs> it was a building site not that long ago, and it's, they've done an incredible job. I think everybody should be really, really, really proud of the whole thing. Let's do a big cheers to the chapel and let's do a 